Yo, Parrish, Orphans of Retrogrades. Here on Monday at the start of October, the end of October, we have the synthesis document from Synod October 2023. And guess what? You guessed it. Everywhere on social media, Twitter, YouTube, talking in public spaces, you have the Pope Splainers, Pope Splaining like never before, defiling themselves with more obvious desperate lies than ever before. So in the synthesis document, I'll read from it to you, Momentito. It is very clear that the goal of female deacons, the Sancte Gallen agenda item, is being preserved and um, not necessarily tabled for October 2024, because that implies postponed. It's, it's just been very, very expressly uh, preserved for the record because they are going to tend to it in October of 24. And this was the plan all along. Remember, the Pope Splainers out there who are saying literally this agenda item has been rejected because it hasn't been magisterially onboarded in a middling synod are straight up lying to you straight up lying. The synod, as a creature of magisterium, has no magisterial authority. So even if this were synod 2024, no synod can onboard a new doctrinal or even disciplinary change in the church. So this is straightforwardly a lie to say the synod didn't, under its own power, inter alia, take on board thus and such new convention or doctrine. That just can't happen. But especially a synod that's ongoing. This synod has, is not considered an extraordinary synod. It's just part of a two-part ordinary synod. And here's what the document actually says. I'll read it to you directly rather than giving you an interpretation. In its proposal, N, item N, theological and pastoral research on women's access to the diaconate should be continued. Taking advantage of the results of the commissions specially established by the Holy Father and the theological, historical, and exegetical research already done. If possible, the results should be presented at the next session of the assembly. And that, my friends, is the rub. Parish orphans and retrogrades. Everywhere... Over the weekend, I was on a, a camping trip with friends out in the RV, in a different part of Mississippi, and we saw the synthesis document, and I saw folks with some agenda saying the ordaining of women to the diaconate has been rejected. And I, I looked at the document. Wow, that, that's, that would be great, however unlikely. And it says that it's been not only preserved, but it's been preserved specially for the next assembly and that they want uh, a hastened commission of research done. I, and obviously, the, we know what the research means from Family Synods 2014-2015. It just means continue talking about it, pause a little bit, and eventually they're going to unroll this heresy and eventually put it into the AAS. Um, and they want it specially done and expedited so that it's complete for October 2024. In what sense is this a rejection? I mean, this is too stupid a question to ask. So we'll talk about it. We'll look at a few of the other passages in this thing in today's show. And just mainly, I don't think I have to belabor the point. The document is out. It's not, we're not, we're not going to get a post- Synodal Apostolic Exhortation until after the 24 Synod, which, which I mentioned the first day of my coverage of Synod 23. So, straightforwardly, um, this is far worse than what was rumored to be happening. It's, it's actually worse. I, I didn't think that at 23 Synod we would get ex ex such an explicit affirmation of female deacons. I don't know what the folks who dishonestly or honestly have mistaken this to be a rejection 
can be thinking. But so I'll read, read some of the other passages to you and uh, they, they shore up their apposite with the assumption that this is, this is bad, this is just precisely, following precisely the pattern of 2014, 2015, synods and um, it's all going to come down at the next synod and and thereafter because magisterially the 24th synod can't do anything can't take decisive action on its own anyway it'll have to be the the exhortation or or action that that francis takes pursuant to the synod on synodality process it's a crazy world it's a clown world where um desperate folks will take any cue to lie and to give the spin they want to facts. But you saw it everywhere. If you're on any social media, they're saying, oh man, the, the far left and the far right in the church are probably crying now. I, the far left is overjoyed by this. And the far right is neither crying nor laughing, but they are saying, what the hell are you talking about? This is an I told you so from, from us, not you. Very strange times. Speaking of strange times, you need to get out of your blue state and get to a red state, just like I did, going from the bluest to the blue to the reddest to the red. Go to realestateforlife.org and be helped by a pro-Catholic, pro-life good guy who will help you get out of your home in any state, but preferably a blue state, and get to any new state you fancy, preferably a red state. Go to realestateforlife.org and they will help you to get someplace better. Hopefully the blood red swath of states from Texas to Florida, like I did. And that's, that's a move you make for yourself. If you want to make a gambit to support this program, go to Locals or Subscribe Star. We're no longer on Patreon because we, we stood our ground and got kicked off. Locals and Subscribe Star are linked to this video. They're how you can support the program right now we have an exclusive Lord of the Rings reading group happening on Wednesdays, and it's just for locals and subscribe star supporters. So support us there today. Also, if you want to support me, a quote unquote dad with a webcam, you can also donate. It's a whole different proposition than locals or subscribe star. That's straight up donation at timothyjgordon.com. And you help us keep the lights on, not in the business, but in the home. So let, let's let's look at some of the, the tweetage. Uh, I think you've probably seen it yourselves. And so uh, when it's so obvious, when it's so out there and so ubiquitous, it's sort of a luxury to me because I don't have to, and when I'm researching these shows in the morning time, I don't have to come up with all kinds of substantiation because you, you've seen it. Over the weekend, I think it was Saturday when this Senate document got published here in America. And it was... Um, obnoxion everywhere, obnoxion. You just saw folks spiking the football in the end zone. Pre specifically, Pope's planner type folks, which is, it's strange. So I was responding to this guy, Metatomist, who said, what's that? Oh, that's on the, okay, there it is. I'm looking at it on my phone. Rad trads and liberals in shambles. And that, that, and then he, he linked to Bree Dale's, I think, breaking of four screenshots of the synthesis document from the Senate. And there's bad stuff peppered in there. It's, it's actually worse than I anticipated. Would be, I, I didn't think really this Senate would do anything other than talk about it, which we do have evidence they talked about women deacons and uh, LMNOP, SS unions, things like that. But I, I was really kind of waiting. When, remember, when they extended this time of the year last year, the synod was supposed to end yesterday or the day before. It was supposed to be the end of synod on synodality. And Pope Francis said, no, we need to kick it back a year. Incrementalism takes time. Weaponized ambiguity takes time. It took them a little bit of time with the family synods. Now, all of the, uh, the people spiking the, end, the football in the end zone saying rad trads are always wrong, um, they still just won't talk about what happened at the 2014-2015 synods in the material heresy now, residing like a tumorous cancer in uh, the magisterium. They won't, they won't refer to that. And 
of course, this is almost 10 years later. This is nine, eight, eight to nine years later. And people are much more suspicious of Francis than they were in 2014, 2015, 2016. 2014, 2015, 2016 are what made them suspicious of Francis. So he has to take a little more time. So last year, without any explanation besides that which I'm now furnishing, he said, uh, we, need, we, need to, we need to make the Synod on Synodality go another year. We're going to have an October 24 session, right? We need to draw this out. Like I said in my last show last week, they're drawing it out. That's how incrementalism works. Julian Maloney covered this really thoroughly. You need time, you need patience, you need incrementalism. Because normies out there get bored. They have early bedtimes. They have to tend to weekly routine and things. They say, hey, look, if it hasn't happened by now, we're just going to assume it's not going to happen, even though this is absolutely why the bad guys in the church, outside of the church, always win. Because we're just the people in the burbs that get bored paying attention. Or we get tired of bad news. That's another one you hear from the NPCs out there. We get tired of bad news. Well, guess what? It is bad news. And guess what the gospel calls us to? We can't just tire of bad news and therefore begin to lie. So I, I responded to Metatomist. I said, I'm thinking you must have missed an item and its identical pattern to the 1415 synod's relation to Amoris Laetitia. And I'll read that N item one more time. And, and every other, because context is important to Pope explainers like Michael M. and M. Lofton, they, I'll, I'll read the context of the other proposals immediately surrounding item N as well. So N says, theological and pastoral research on women's access to the diaconate should be continued. Then this is, remember, Synod on Synodality is considered an ongoing synod. Remember, what was it uh, Bishop Overbeck said, Archbishop Overbeck from the Synodal Way, said all of the change will happen not at this synod or in October 24, it will happen between them, which is what happened, which is how all of the revolutionary change happened at the family synods. Taking advantage of the results of the commission specially established by the Holy Father. That's a salt in the wound, right? For those people that think the Holy Father's on the right side in this. And by the theological, historical, and exegetical research already done. If possible, the results should be presented at the next session of the assembly. And by if possible, they mean definitely. We're going to make it possible. Present it next year. Why would you research? Let's throw a billion dollars of research at can pigs fly? So a billion dollars of research at, can I draw a circular planar figure that's orthogonal in nature, a circular square? No. You can, well, obviously, they're only studying it to do it. Do, do you guys believe you study an impossibility and you throw money at it and time at it? If I told you a Wolverine makes a good house pet, if you'd believe A, then you'd believe B. So there's also pretty much every, every proposal, because context matters, all the other proposals surrounding Proposal N are bad. Proposal L, local churches in particular are encouraged to broaden their service of listening, accompanying, and caring for women who are most marginalized in different social contexts. Don't know what that means. Just like, like pretty much every document that's been put out in the Francis Pontificate pretty much for the last 60 years by Papal Magisterium or, or whatever this is. Um, just a bunch of words. Fl not even particularly florid, just a big string of words that doesn't mean anything. Local churches in particular are encouraged to broaden their service of listening, accompanying, I'm already bored, listening, accompanying, and caring for women who are most marginalized in different social contexts. They don't even know what this means. It just means... Woke, 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 women, feminism, the church is going to not, you're not going to recognize the church when they're done with it. Point M, there's an urgent need to ensure that women can participate in decision-making processes and assume roles of responsibility in pastoral care and ministry. This is Agenda 2030. This is WEF, who runs the church. World Economic Forum is 
has this passage in Agenda 2030. Look, women need to have this role across different social contexts. Women need to be in sports. Why is that in an environmental document, Agenda 2030? Why are they writing our church documents more or less for us? So it's all the same agenda. This is Ban Ki-moon of the UN. This is Jeffrey Sachs, who probably, for all we know, helped to co-author Laudate Si, Laudato Si, along with Tucho Fernandez. He was in and out of the Vatican all of summer of 2014. The Holy Father has significantly increased the number of women's in positions of responsibility in the Roman Curia. Can't have that. I mean, no one's making a big deal of that, including myself. You can't have women in the Roman Curia. And it's just, he's going from a smaller number to a less smaller number. The number needs to be zero. Already lost there. So what, what is all the spiking of the football in the end zone? It's incredible. The same should happen at other levels of church life. So they're just, they're destroying it all. Canon law should, what? I just said gross. It's gross. You're gross, sir. <laughs> you, sir, are gross. Canon law should be adapted accordingly. Uh, proposal N, I've already read you a couple times. O, is, so, so context, right? Context matters. Wait, and, and just remind me. Where's the good news? I'm looking for it. Proposal O. Cases of employment discrimination. FML. And un unequal remuneration within the church be addressed and resolved, particularly with regard to consecrated women who are too often considered cheap labor. I, I can't take it, man. P. There's need to expand women's access to training programs and theological studies. I mean, why? Yes, but also just FML. I can't take it. Let women be included in seminary teaching and training programs to foster better formation for ordained ministry. What? Where's the good news? What? What? What is it? For, what? So they're preparing them to teach ordained ministry more. They shouldn't be... I mean, this violates holy writ. Is the scripture inerrant or not? I take my precious time debating goofy heretical Protestants on Trent Horn's channel, right? Sola Scriptura is absolutely wrong. You have to be illiterate to believe in this. But it is inerrant. Do we believe that or not? The Protestants actually believe it. God bless them. The illiterate Protestants actually get this right. Scripture's all right. Go talk to Doug Wilson. Go talk to a Calvinist of any stripe. They're like, yeah, women are denied from having teaching authority over men. Then uh, where are the goofballs? See, the joke's on us. We're like, yeah, it's fun to, to tease Protestants because their, their methodology is a joke. They have no dogmatic theology. They have no dogmatic system of metaphysics or physics for organizing. They have no ecclesiology whatsoever. So the, it's goofy. But at least they take the scripture seriously. And we're literally women are for bad, very clearly, as plainly as you could get, by Holy Scripture. And we say that's an errant. From teaching men. From teaching men. And let me reread. Oh, cases of employment discrimination and unequal remuneration within the church be addressed and resolved, particularly with regard to consecrated women who are too often considered cheap labor. P, there is need to expand women's access to training programs and theological studies. Let women be included in seminary teaching and training programs to foster better formation for ordained ministry. I mean, this, this sounds like it could be teacher or student. The, the dames is teacher or student. They shouldn't be either. It's both. It's both. Let them learn quietly at home. From their husbands. Thank you. That's also scripture. I, I know a lot of the Catholics out there don't believe scripture is actually inerrant. Q. I mean, it is. It's, it's binary. It's one way or the other. If scripture is inerrant, then this is heresy. It's undeclared material heresy. Q. Let liturgical texts and church documents be more attentive not only to the use of language that holds men and women equally. This is also a, a rejection of Christian complementarity. We're not equals. This is a rejection of eight places in the New Testament. We're not equals in rank. We're... Uh, 
holds us equally. This is dysphoria. What is to feel good about from any of this? Not just in the document, but it, in anything regarding the status of Christian teaching now. So the one true Christianity. Nothing. This is... Pick your analogy. It's worse than a train wreck, though. This is a dumpster fire. But also to the inclusion of the range of words, images, and narratives that draw with greater vitality on women's experience. Diane Montagna just DM'd you um, a tweet of hers. I, I'm, not, I'm not fully understanding it, so you might want to just give it a peek here in a second. Oh, okay, thanks. Uh, item R, we propose that properly trained women can be judges in all canonical trials. It just gets so, like, when I, when I used to listen to Michael Savage, and he'd just come on the radio yelling at Congress, I'm like, I don't want a headache, man. So I don't know what other commentary I can give you that would be helpful. Besides, I'm not even yelling at the, the, the radicals that are doing this, up to and including Francis. I'm talking about the people that just lie to you, that are supposedly faithful Catholics. Diane's 22-minute-old tweet that she just DM'd me was, We were repeated, and Diane's one of the good guys. Th thank goodness for her. Thank goodness yeah. for Ed Penton. Thank goodness for Michael Haynes. I would have brought, been able to bring you Virtually no meaningful synod coverage without these three individuals. So God bless you all, Diane and Ed and Michael. Thank you. Synod, we were repeatedly told that synod discussions would identify both convergences and divergences. Yet in the synthesis report, we have three parts. Convergences, matters for consideration, and proposals. Are divergences now simply matters on which more consideration is needed? I, I'm not... Um, I think that it's... I'm not sure exactly... Um, it's listing the paragraph that they, on that tweet, I'll try to get it up on the screen here in a second. From what I understand, it's the paragraph, these things here, and people who were said yes, no, and approved on these, at 11 OP, is, is, that, is that correct? I'm, I'm honestly not sure. She said, the graphic above shows the voting breakdown of one section, yeah, you're right, it's voting stuff, on the synthesis report. Convergenze equals convergences, questione di affrontare equals matters for consideration, and proposte equals proposals. Here it is. The pretense that the Synod on Synodality speaks as a body united by the Holy Spirit is furthered by the refusal to plainly state issues which resulted in not agreement but disagreement. So what she's saying is that this is kabuki theater, which, which is, I mean, how many times do you have to see this? They're just, they're talking about it, whether or not they populated the synod with enough radical losers to, to make an actual difference is immaterial. Because even if the radical losers carried a vote of 99-1, that's got no value. The value is strictly rhetorical. The value of a synod is strictly rhetorical. It's a creature of Vatican II. It was created to destroy the church. Okay, so it's a strictly rhetorical value to get together with world press after the 60s. You could do this. You don't even have to have social media. You could do this just with television. So when this system, synodality, was created in Lumen Gentium, it is to do precisely what they're doing. The, the, I think it's, a, I believe the story. I believe the, the somewhat normy story that, the really far left guys in the church are still a minority, but they're the powerful minority. I mean, so are the people that run the WEF and the banks. They're a minority. They're just a very, very powerful minority. And everyone who's in the center, right center, left center, whatever, they're just wisps in the willow, you know, wisps in the wind in the willow or whatever, the, however that goes, right? They just blow wherever the, the wind takes them. And they'll go, uh, yeah. So they'll the powerful minority might not be able to carry a vote unless their rhetoric was especially good over the last three and a half weeks. But there's nothing to vote on. It's not an actionable vote. A synod's not magisterial in value. The Africans and the Asians, there were some heroes, some real heroes. No, no, no graveyard whistling. There are some real heroes in the 2014-2015 synods. And guess what? They were... A few of our guys, the Dubia guys, 
from the, the English speaking world, but then there are the Africans and there are the South Asians that did good work. Thank you. But it didn't matter that they kicked up a fuss at 2014 in the Relatio, the midterm report. In 2015, Pope Francis and his goons just changed the rules on them. And they, they started the information lockdown. And then even in the final votes of 2015, according to Ed Penton, they didn't carry any overwhelming majority or even a bare simple majority. It doesn't matter. It's not a real vote. Why are idiots out there talking? This is not... It's like it's just a um, caucus system. It's a caucus system without a vote. They can't vote into... We're not, we're not Protestant yet. You can't vote into the magisterium, any of this stuff. It's all on Francis' head, which is sort of the beauty at the end of the day. He has to answer for this. So Amoris Laetitia is why we have now this heretical communion for, for adulterers. Amoris Laetitia is. Amoris Laetitia was probably written before the first 2014 synod ever happened. It doesn't matter what the vote was. You guys, you guys need to learn how the world works. You guys need to learn how the powerful elites work. You need to learn how apparatchiks of the left work. It's no different inside and outside the church. This is how it works. Literally just read any of these documents. The documents are far more naked and out there and open than I figured they would be. I, I'm, I'm being honest. I thought they would be relatively boring documents. Um, and I thought we'd get a little 15% more leaks, but we got lots of interesting leaks. Look at all the great, well, not great, but interesting shows I was able to do just based on three reporters on the good guys team. Did you read all of them? Did you do Q and R? Yeah, I did Q and R. Thank you. I did do Q and R. Um, there were some other pages that were really bad because they talk about uh, uh, Skittles people. Where do they talk about Skittles people? Oh yeah, issues to be addressed at the next minute. We're not even done with this. Did you retweet that so I can put that on the screen? Which one? Did you retweet whatever this is so I can put it on the screen? Oh, yeah. I'll retweet one at a time, I okay. guess. Okay. Um, so L is the thing. Here, I'll repost that. I'll repost. That's already reposted. That's already reposted. Okay. So, yeah. Um... Listen to this. Different positions have been expressed regarding women's access to the diaconal ministry. This is Jay. I haven't even read this. All this focus on... You think they're doing all this for nothing? How silly, how stupid can somebody be? Different positions have been expressed regarding women's access to diaconal ministry. Some consider that this step would be unacceptable as it would be in discontinuity with tradition. Is this even written in semi-neutral language? You, pe you tell me. For others, however, granting women access to the diaconate would restore a practice of the early church. Sounds much less, much less break, you know, breaking on this declarative statement. So Still a third. Still others discern in this step an appropriate and necessary response to the signs of the times. That's, the, that's a repetition of two. See, they're supposed to be going, well, some like it, some don't. And all they're doing is telling us this, this isn't even facially neutral language. And then all this bullshit language. Faithful to tradition and be capable of finding an echo in the hearts of many who seek renewed vitality and energy in the church. This is how dumb midwits write. This was written by a woman. I'm just going to say. <laughs> nah, it's written, by a, a, it's written by one of the modern prelates in the church. Other than the midwits. Of a woman. <laughs> Some express fear that this request is an expression of a dangerous anthropological confusion. Embracing which the church would align itself with the spirit of the times. Okay. We'll take that. Not so, not so much floridity there. That's just, sure. The discussion, point K, in this regard is also connected to the broader reflection on the theology of the diaconate. And then they go into it. 
the proposals. Local churches in particular are encouraged to broaden their search. And then all that. L-M-N-O-P-Q-R. All proposals. They continue. Um, hold on. They go through the Skittle stuff here too. Just in case any of you are still finding this. Oh, this is a rejection of the leftist agenda. What? Okay, please. Here. We don't, we don't sometimes use the chat well enough on this show. It's a critique. It's going to be... Um, I think it's H. Okay, H. That. I'll read H. Anyone in the comments that's finding this stuff compelling, I, I'm not trying to bully you. Tell me what you're finding compelling. Will you look for chat comments that that say they're compelled by this stuff? I won't mock it. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to figure out where you're coming from. I think this is overall, nothing but bad. Let me read H. Yeah, but but H. you go ahead. You go ahead. I think the overall feeling for people who are like spiking the ball in the end zone, they're just saying, hey, nothing happened during this synod. I think that's the only argument they have. Hey, look, nothing happened. But they're not retarded. Like that can't, it can't, <laughs> it's got to be more than that. They know, they know it can't happen at this synod. That's like saying, well, you know, they didn't drop a nuclear bomb. So this is, I mean, they're being cocky. They're say, I'm like, what, did I miss part of the document? They're saying, oh, cry tears far left and far right. What are you talking about? H, in different ways, people who feel marginalized or excluded from the church because of their marriage situation, identity, and sexuality also ask to be heard and accompanied and that their dignity be defended. There was a deep sense of love, mercy, and compassion felt in the assembly... I'm sure there was. For people who are or feel hurt or neglected by the church, who desire a place to come home and where they can feel safe, be heard and respected, without fear of feeling judged. Oh, boy. But see, you are judged. You, that's, that's a problem. You will be judged. You will be judged. I mean, you're, you're, you're being judged right now on heaven and on earth for mortal sins, for public mortal sins. Listening is a prerequisite for walking together in search of God's will. The assembly reaffirms that Christians cannot disrespect the dignity of any person. How do you do that? How do you even do that? Uh, the, the previous one, because context matters. G, the assembly expresses its closeness and support to all those who experience a condition of loneliness as a choice of fidelity to the church's tradition and magisterium on marriage and sexual ethics in which they recognize the source of life. Christian communities are invited to be especially close to them, listening to them and accompanying them in their commitment. I don't, I don't know what any of those... I know what all those words mean individually, taken on the page. It's just a man whose vow of celibacy who's for swearing off women, is not at all a sacrifice. <laughs> Let me say this as diplomatically as possible. It is a man who deeply, from the core of his being, sympathizes with the LMNOP and writes like it. And you can tell. That's who wrote this document. I'm not sure who it is. It's a man who deeply sympathizes with the Skittles movement. Too deeply. F, the church needs to listen with special care and sensitivity to the voices of victims and survivors of sexual, spiritual, economic, institutional power and conscience abuse by clergy members or persons with church appointments. That's funny. Have you heard what's going on with Rupnik the last three days? That's great. But the Pope is defending Rupnik tooth and nail. This is how the left operates. Look at Lenin, look at Stalin, look at Trotsky, look at our church leadership, it's that. All animals are equal animals, except some animals are more equal than others, right? If you're in with one of the villains on top, then you're untouchable. Everyone else, the Politburo keeps whatever. Whatever's considered contraband in the wicked regime, whether you're talking Germany or Russia, whether it's cigarettes or American peanut butter, right, in Soviet Russia, you can't have that unless you're in the, the top removed part of the pyramid. If you're one of Francis's special people, like Rupnik is, you're not, you're untouchable. You can do whatever you like, and, and they do. Uh, there's just so much. There's not, there's not one good section in this. There's not, there's literally not one good section. This is, People can be mistaken 
It, you know, so error or contradiction doesn't always mean you're lying. People can be mistaken, but I'm saying, yes, I, I will say this has to be closer to lying because there, there's no grounds for error. There's no pitfalls. Is, is anybody trying to defend this? No, but I'm, I'm reading ahead for you. Um, you want to take a, lo a note at proposals, next picture, N and Q. Really weird. Q is weird. Um, but look at N. What... Should we change so that those who feel excluded can experience a more welcoming church? Let me reread that. What should we change so that those who feel excluded, like Skittles people, like women's, like adulterers who are horny for their concubines, they feel excluded. They want to have sex. They really want to have sex. Skittles priests, they're... They really want it. Okay, they feel excluded. So what should we change? Um, this is the synod document that these idiots were calling a victory. What should we change so that those who feel excluded, I, those three main groups, adulterers, skittles, ladies, can experience a more welcoming church? Just the rules. That's the answer. That's the only possible answer. That's what we can change. Well, they feel excluded because they want to have sex with whomever. They can't do it now. They're going to feel excluded. The first principle is we have to make them not feel excluded. It's that simple. And, and with regard to the ladies, they feel excluded because they're dysphoric and they think they can be deacons and priests. Well, we have to change that then. Listening and accompaniment are not just individual initiatives, item N says, but a form of ecclesial action. That means we have to change ecclesiology to befit them. This is why they must find a place within the ordinary pastoral planning. This is why they're going to change it all. And operational structuring of Christian communities at a different level. I mean, is it, once again, at what, at what possible pitfall is there to think this is a good thing for the church? Read P and you tell, there's a nugget there in P. And let me see if you, if you catch it. I think you will. P, okay, this is P. People who carry out the service of listening and accompanying in different forms need adequate training. Also, according to the type of people they come into contact with and to feel supported by the community. For its part, communities need to become fully aware of the value of a service exercised on their behalf to be able to receive the fruit of this listening. Next one. Our, our next line. There it is. I, I'm seeing nuggets all over. Yeah. In order to give greater prominence to this service, the establishment of a list of a ministry of listening and accompaniment based on baptism. baptism. Oh, <laughs> oh, I didn't see this. You're right. Adapted to different contexts is proposed. The modalities of its conferral will promote greater community involvement. Well, there it is. Now, why would it need to be based on baptism, baptism. and not sex? Because, again, they're involving women. And remember, the, the big bullshit talking point at the, the first week of the Synod was, look, women have the dignity of baptism. They kept yeah. saying, well, what are you talking about? Yeah, we know. That's not the dignity of no one, life. No one life. ever said that women can't be baptized. They kept saying, dignity of baptism, dignity of baptism. So they're, what they're going to do, I, I'm sorry, I just called this, I just called this too well. There's going to be a middle, a middle way ordination in between helper deacons and ordained deacons that's going to shove up to or uh, ordained deacons even b because of the principle of the excluded middle. And they're going to say, well, baptism. Yeah, you're exactly right, Steph. I, I did miss that. Now Thank get you. To Q. The modalities of this conferral will promote greater community involvement. Okay, there you, there you have it. I mean, it's all over. It's, it's just all over. There's not, there's not anything in here. Could you wait? Would you explain in case I missed anything that you saw? It's um, Q is what you really want to read next. Q is what I want to read yeah. next. Um, really weird. Super weird. Creepy weird. Okay, hold on. I'll be right there. Here we go. Okay, so uh, Q C cam. I did. I remember reading the C cam one, but I don't. I don't remember any huge bombshells. CCAM, the Symposium of the Episcopal Conferences of Africa and Madagascar, is encouraged to promote theological and pastoral discernment on the issue of polygamy. What the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> and the accompaniment of people in polygamous unions coming to faith. I mean, what is happening right now? Who, who thinks this is a victory? 
I have I, no I, clue. I, have, I don't I, remember I that have part. Reclept. I I am I am without speech. <laughs> this is so odd. I'll reread this it. This is worse than I thought it would be. <laughs> I mean, outside of Michael Lofton out there, who is saying this? There's a lot of people. Secam wow. is encouraged to promote theological and pastoral discernment. All these terms that have no meaning. <laughs> Theological and pastoral discernment on the issue of polygamy. You have to discern. Polygamy is outlawed, right? By like the Mosaic law, not just Jesus only. And the accompaniment of people in polygamous unions coming to faith. Look, if I have to spell some of this stuff out, then you ain't going to make it. It's that simple. You don't have to be a professor of whatever it's just you ought to be able to see when somebody's trying to cut your throat or trying to cut your faith's throat i i just i feel like yeah i say that out one side of my mouth and then we've been done four shows a week on the the synod out the other side of my mouth that's because i i, I do want to make the information accessible to people that might not go on twitter and seek out diane or ed or michael but and I want to make real plain what they're doing. But I, when I read this stuff, I just it's frustrating to see so many people. It's frustrating to be in the throng. You know, when you have a nude emperor up there and everyone's talking about his his finery. It's just it's clearly made up. This is clearly pre-planned. This has been done by this pope using the synod system. They're not camouflaging they're not they're telegraphing their punches they're, they're showing you where they're going to come from i i don't understand are we having anyone push back in chat i'd really like to get out of the echo chamber sent and just i i want to pick your brain what are you hearing that's good news they, i've read most of the four documents or at least most of three or four pages we did not Honest to goodness, we did not say, okay, let's 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 bury this good news in this document. Uh, I'm just seeing a, a nice comment that um, Anthony Stein gave credit to you several times recently on his show. I think on I think on the Synod cover. He is look, Anthony Stein has a great show, and he I thought he had a great show since uh, fall of eighteen. I don't know where he gets his news from, Pontificator Maximus. But he gets extra news that is one of the... I, I do pay attention to what he's saying because he gets extra... Uh, he gets extra stuff that I don't find on LifeSite or on one of these three things. So I do pay attention to him and I encourage you to too. And I usually agree with his analysis. I, I can't remember if we might have argued about something five years back. I, I, I really don't care. I don't mind disagreeing with someone. I just appreciate when there's someone honest out there that's doing extra digging, that's doing good work, and I, I mean, it, it makes it easier to, the fact that I do agree with most of his analysis. I don't think the an analysis is particularly abstruse. I don't think there's like arcane meaning that all this stuff is laden with. It's pretty obvious. Why do they say like, look, we want to help people who like polygamy. We want to help people that that like Skittles. We we want, you know, we want to help women who want to become deacons. And the church needs to change. I mean, this is all it says. By the way, we don't like people that like the Latin mass. And we we want to change change the fact that that Benedict in a little small weak way helped the people that like Latin mass. I I mean, I I think they're just telling you, look, this is what we're going to do. We're telegramming we're telegraphing our, our passes, our punches. We, we like this group. We don't like this group. We're going to make the changes in accordance with the fact we like this group and we don't like this group. It is woke university 101. This is just how the world works now. It's no different. Did you read Edward Penton's uh, tweet from yesterday? Um, I, have it on the, I, I have it on the screen for you if you want to read it. It's uh, the German bishop's response to this final synod text. And it's to Would be you expected. Read it? Yeah. Um, is this Overbeck? Franz Overbeck? No, this is Botzing. Oh, Botzing. I remember um, this guy. The head of, this is Penton yesterday, the German bishop's response to everything that Tim just, just read to you. And it says, the head of Germany's bishops, Bishop Georg Botzing, said Sunday that the Synod on Synodality's final text, quote, 
is a big step for the universal church, end quote, and that the wish of the synod to revise Catholic sexual ethics is, quote, an enormous step forward, end quote. Finally, an honest man. Yeah. I mean, I disagree with him, but with someone who's not lying. He yeah. contended that an overwhelming majority of the universal church has spoken out in favor of this. We might be lying there. Botzing was referring to part of the text which says, quote, some topics such as those related to gender identity or sexual orientation are also controversial in the church because they raise new questions, end quote. The text then goes on to say, do you want me to read that part since yeah, you read it? Yeah, okay. please The do. text then goes on to say, quote, sometimes existing anthropological, uh, anthropom thank you, categories are not su sufficient to grasp the complexity of what emerges from the experience or from science, and therefore this calls for further investigation. We must take the necessary time for this reflection and devote the best of our energies to it, and not fall into simplistic judgments that hurt people or damage the body of the church, end quote. And then I think Penton goes on to say that synod, the synod's German bishops also said on Sunday that they view the four-week deliberations positively and have called for further steps to be taken in the coming year. Okay. Well, so, I mean, we had, on the right-wing side, we had Diane Montagna and, and Ed Penton and Michael Haynes who were telling the truth. And now on the left-wing side, we have um, Batsing, who I've covered in many, many shows throughout the last five years, also telling the truth. Aside from the fact that I, I don't, I think he might be reasoning wishfully. I don't think he really cares that you know the the urge to change all these sexual ethics rules and the urge to change rules on women deacons is the overwhelming majority of the church. But who's who's really to say there? It the point is it doesn't matter. The point is they're going to change it because the muscle, a minority group like they did at Vatican II, like they did at Vatican II. Um, it is in favor of changing it. That doesn't mean the whole church wants it. It means the weak or too busy with private vice centrist men who are in charge, um, who are, are in the minor the majority. They they're not going to stop them. Remember, remember. Can we? Well, I'll just play it here. Remember what what Ca I'll close with this. What Cas Cardinal Casper said in between the 2014 and 2015 synods. I, I know I played it last time, but I want you to hear it again. Fr he'd been saying Francis is with me. Francis is with me all through the 2014 synod. He likes the Casper plan. Let's make adultery not a sin anymore. Let's let people get divorces and they can go receive the sacraments. And he was saying, I can speak for Francis. He was saying that all throughout 2014. I remember this like it was yesterday. Then, right before the 2015 Synod opened up, to confuse the midwits out there, he said, no, I, you know, I exaggerated. Francis is no longer with me. You know, I thought I was going to prevail, but I'm not going to. He said this on Raymond Arroyo's show. Then, of course, 2015 Synod opens up, and, and he'd been lying. He'd been trotted out there to confuse everyone. Francis was with him all along, of course. Um, he sunk Gallen Mafia. He, they're, they're the ones that control Francis. All right, here's what was said on Arroyo's show. Your eminence, for decades, you have been arguing that there needs to be mercy extended to divorced and remarried Catholics in the form of communion, granting them communion under certain cases. Do you feel you are close to achieving that end now? with the Synod coming and where the Holy Father is? This I do not know, because I left it open. I did not want to anticipate the Synod and the decision of the Holy Father, and therefore it's not a firm proposal, it's are questions. Mm -hmm. And uh, I get a lot of uh, agreements, but also a lot of critiques, and mm -hmm. there's this tension there. Now I propose to those who prepare the Synod to uh, prepare a text which can be get the agreement of the, whole, of the great majority. Mm -hmm. It's the same method also we had in the Council. So your proposal was put forward. Hear what he said there? Say, what he said was literally, I proposed, he didn't say this, he meant something vague, to get the agreement of the great majority, even though it's not exactly what we meant in there. We had to get the, the agreement of the great majority, same thing we did at the council. 
You hear what he said there? He snuck it in. Fair. Now, I propose to those who prepare the synod to uh, prepare a text which can be get the agreement of the whole of the great majority. It's the same method also we had in the council. So your proposal was put hmm. forward, and it was controversial. It's of course it was. But you have said, and I'm quoting you, the Pope approved of your proposal. You said clearly this is what he wants. Do you agree with that still? And are now, you speaking now, for the Pope? Now, of course, I spoke beforehand with the Pope. It is not a, a conference at an academic realm. It is an sure. important issue before the cardinals. And he was in favor to open the debate, uh -huh. but not a certain proposal. Mm -hmm. And I did not ask him what he wants, but he wanted to touch the problem and to open the debate. This he wanted. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this I, I did. But then I had the impression he was, uh, he, more or less, he agreed what he said. Afterwards, to the cardinals, it was not against his opinion. Mm -hmm. But I cannot say that I have now made the proposal of the Pope. Mm -hmm. No, because at the time of the Synod, I know there was some reportage where you were saying that you were speaking for the Pope and you understood <laughs> his mind. Is that, was that an exaggeration or do you stand That's up? an exaggeration. I, I, I was expressing his mind in the sense that he wanted to debate about all these problems. Mm -hmm. He's for openness and for frankness and he says it's not, it does not help to suppress the questions. I want to explore this a little bit just so the audience fully understands what, what is at stake here and what the proposal that we, we, we're talking about. It, is, it really is a proposal to allow divorced and remarried Catholics to return to the sacraments with some haste, correct? Well, um, so what he said there, in between 2014 and 2015, synods is, yeah, before I said I spoke for the Pope, when, and he liked the Casper proposal, which comes from Eastern Orthodoxy. By the way, don't, don't leave for Eastern Orthodoxy. This, all this bad stuff comes from them, um, w uh, at least with regard to communion for the divorced and civilly remarried via the Foro Interno. Uh, um, so he said yes. Now he's saying no, and then um, and then Arroyo goes, wait, why are you saying no? The, the, you couldn't speak for the Pope. You said you spoke for the Pope. He's like, I never said that. Then he's like, direct quote. He calls bullshit, and then he goes, okay, yeah, well, I was exaggerating. Okay, that, that that's literally what you just heard there. By the way, you know that it was, you know, bullshit upon bullshit upon bullshit because what ended up happening is Francis had been with him all along. We now have the whole story. Francis believes in it so hardcore that he put it into the Acta Apostolica Cetis. So we now have the luxury of history to be like, oh, this is the little interference they ran. This is how Cardinal Martini taught Francis. This is how you get heresy vested into the heart of the church like a canker. You have to go, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Then boom, one definitive act. Listen to you this. You understand when a churchman like yourself, a theologian, an esteemed international figure, a courier official says, here is my proposal, and the Pope agrees with me. Well, they said, did not say. That, that does cause some. Well, you, well, you did no, say. I mean, you did say, uh, and the quote is, clearly this is what he wants, and the Pope has approved of my proposal. Those no, are quotes from the time. he did not approve my proposal. The Pope wanted to say, I Question. Wait, hold it. He's like arguing with him. He's arguing with himself. He's like, well, the Pope didn't approve my proposal. Arroyo's not like, I'm not saying he, he, he clearly did approve of the proposal, but Arroyo, this is 2015. Arroyo didn't for sure know that yet. Arroyo's like, I'm not saying it. You said it. You're arguing with yourself. He's like, this is just what you said, man. You said the Pope approves of your proposal. And that's true. He was saying it all throughout 2014. Now you're saying he doesn't approve the proposal. Which one is it? And he's like, well, well, he doesn't necessarily. He's like, I'm not in the argument. This is Cardinal Walter Casper arguing against Cardinal Walter Casper. <laughs> and it's a knockout bout. And this is Cardinal what liars Walter do. Casper is like, don't listen to Cardinal Walter Casper. He's a liar. We're like, now that's one true thing you said. <laughs> But listen to this. And the Pope has approved of my proposal. Those no, are the quotes from the time. he did not approve my proposal. The Pope wanted that I put the question, uh -huh. and afterwards, in a general way, mm -hmm. before all the cardinals, he expressed his satisfaction with my talk, but not he ended not in the special question. I, I, I would not say he approved okay. his proposal. Well, you would say that. You did you say that. You, you did say that. But uh, um, so what they're talking about here is. Uh, in early 2014, remember, synods come at the end of the year in October. It was in spring of 2014, maybe it was summer, but it was late spring, early summer. Pope Francis got everyone together, all of the who would be synod fathers in a few months, together. And he said, you have to listen to this talk by Casper. It's really good. And he made them listen to it. You, you need to study this question. Same as what they're doing to women deacons right now. He said, you need to study it. You're not allowed to miss this talk. You have to come, listen to Casper. It's a great talk. Study it. He set it up like Kabuki Theater, 2014 Synod, 2015 Synod. 
all that's all they were talking about. They're talking about the family, not busted families. It's supposed to be the synod on the family. All they were talking about is horny adulterers who are divorced that that just want to go find someone else to have sex with. That's all that predominated these two synods. And by the way, JP2 in 1987 changed a little rule that was not heretical. He said, if you're a remarried adulterer, all you have to do to stop being an adulterer, even if you're civilly remarried after a divorce, you don't have to leave your new spouse. All you have to do is live in a Josephite way as brother and sister with him. If you do that, and you make this plainly known publicly so you're not scandalizing people and you stick to it and it's something that your parish priest will work with you with, then technically you can confess your past sin with pure intent, receive full contrition, uh, receive full atonement and go back to the... That, that's, that doesn't change anything. That's how our moral theology works. That's fine. No one had any problems with that. Francis had this specifically addressed. And you know what he said? He's like, I'm talking about the people that keep having sex with their concubine. That's specifically what the family synod was about. I want to let people that are divorced, remarried to someone new, and don't want to stop having sex with the new person. I want to let them come to the, all this was laid bare. These are the conditions. And people were like, well, Holy Father, what about, and Amor Satizia addresses this in chapter eight. What are you talking about? What about JP2 made this concession in 1987? If you live in a Josephite way with your concubine, you're, you're not actually committing fresh mortal sin. The church made a special dispensation to make that clear. And he's like, Yeah, but in some situations, it might not be possible. And they're like, Which situations are that? And Francis literally concocted a situation that moral philosophy would not allow. The principle of double effect does not cover this. He said, What if you're you're in a, an adulterous second union. You've already had kids, uh, bastard children, in this adulterous second union, right? They're not legitimate children. And your spouse is not Catholic. See how he had to hardwire this? The exception that swallows the rule. And your second spouse is not Catholic and doesn't care about the Catholic teaching. Um, well, what if they threaten to leave you if you say, hey, I have to be Josephite with you, not have sex? Francis is like, this justifies allowing them to keep having sex. No, it doesn't. The principle of double effect does not cover. You can't, even if that accomplished good, which it doesn't, there's no value in the, there's no positive value in the adulterous second union. That's the same thing as like, in a less bad way, a Skittles relationship. There's no positive value there. You're like, yeah, but the kids need to live with their parent. Well, you can't. You can't force the parent to stay there if he says, if you don't have sex with me in this adulterous second union, then I'm going to leave. There's no value. You, that's literally a violation of the principle of double effect, not a, an implementation of it. So it's, it's errant moral theology. Everyone just skipped over that. Most people that are talking about this don't even know that this is, the specifics are treated in chapter 8 of Amoris Laetitia. And Francis also doesn't care about straight people, married or divorced. This is all about the Lavender Mafia who runs the church. That you, you First, you had to pretend you cared about straight divorced people. Then you're going to talk about the Lavender Mafia's goal, which is really what's running the church. Here's the final Casper. You see a transition second. here. It seemed early on, during the Synod, after the Synod, really up until about December or January, the Holy Father, in all of his interviews... He seemed to be very supportive of your proposal, making those same arguments and sounds. Now something has happened. He now seems to be mm, turning away, questioning, and... Remember, this is what he's doing. He's done a little bit with the women deacons. He's pretty, he said both things. Some people say he's turned away from it. It's just a ruse. This is how Sankt Gallen Mafia works. This is how incrementalism works. So this is in mid-2015. He's, he's pretending to turn away from the Casper proposal. We now know he, he was never turning away from it. He favored it. Putting distance between your proposal and himself. I do not know. I did not speak with him. And he did not speak with me. But what what are you hearing? And, well, probably it's free. <laughs> it's free. And I, I'm uh, totally free. I do not know what he, what he wants. 
I do not know. As you look at the situation now, yeah. um, as you see the African bishops, the Polish bishops, the United States bishops saying there shouldn't be a change in either practice or doctrine. You have people writing, signing petitions, begging the church fathers not to make any changes. Are you still confident that that might happen? Well, it's, it's one side, but there are many petitions also in the other sense, and there are no many cardinals, I mean, no many bishops mm -hmm. who are more on my side. Do you think there's more on your side now? I do not know. I do not know. And I, my suggestion is to find now a formula where the great majority can uh, adhere. Are you working on that formula? No. The lights are on in the room. The lights are off in the room. We disagree on that. Well, let's let's find a formula where everyone can be happy. That that doesn't work. Instead, they just rammed through communion for divorce and civilly remarried. Perverts. Perversion for perverts. This is what's controlled all of the synods of Francis. It's just about making pornea okay. That's what this whole pontificate's been about. And they're doing what they have to do. So I I hope I hope you're not caught off guard. You know what's coming, or you ought to. You do if you've listened to this show. And um, it's it's too bad. It's really too bad. But this is what's coming. Brace yourself. It's it's like a Morris Letizia. The people that can't deal with it will just do with women deacons and, and blessings of same-sex unions what they did with Commune for Divorce and Civilly Remarried. They just will stop talking about it. They're talking a big game now. The bad thing will happen, and then they'll just stop talking about it. That's what's going to happen. I'm sorry to say, no good news. To a better day, Deus Volt.